Hey guys, so um, I'm gonna do a couple of reaction demonstrations today and I'll be throwing a few of these at you guys throughout the uh, coming couple weeks as we work our way through reactions. Now, this is way more fun if I can do this in front of you an actual person, but I didn't want you guys robbed of uh, any of the demonstrations that we would be normally doing. So next best thing is to try to do this through video. All right, so we're gonna do two reactions today. Uh, and both of them represent a type of reaction that we've covered. And we'll see if we can figure out what type of reaction that is. So our first reaction is we're going to take some uh, hydrogen peroxide, which looks like this. H2O2. Right? What we're going to do is we're going to cause that to form uh, water and oxygen gas. Now, uh, those of you who have not learned the balanced chemical reactions yet, right? those twos are there as a form of balancing. Uh, my students, uh, you don't need to worry about those coefficients of twos there, but uh, if, if you've already learned about balancing, that's why I put those twos there. Anyways, uh, so if I were to take some just regular old high for, or sorry, hydrogen peroxide, right? I'm just going to add a little bit to this container. Not too much. All right. Uh, so what we're actually doing, so hydrogen peroxide is kept in opaque containers. That's because uh, when it gets exposed to light, right, it breaks down into hydrogen, or sorry, water and oxygen gas a little bit more quickly. But even in these opaque containers, over time, hydrogen peroxide just becomes water and oxygen gas. That's actually why it's in this weird little flexible container is that allows for expansion when that oxygen gas leaves that system and allows that container to expand a little bit, all right? Now, this is a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide than you would probably have at your house for cleaning wounds and stuff, okay? Now, so what we're actually seeing, and this is not spectacular at all at the moment, is that slow breakdown, right? Over time, this hydrogen peroxide is just becoming water, right? Now I'm gonna scoop this a little bit closer so you guys have a slightly better view. Uh, actually, I shall just bring the camera closer here in a second. Now, uh, so one of the things that I want you guys to understand is some reactions are slow and not at all spectacular, right? But the reaction is still happening. Now, what we can do, though, to speed this reaction along, we can add what's called a catalyst, right? And so uh, we have this arrow here in the middle, and you guys know that that arrow means yields. But we can add what's called a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is a additive we put in the reaction. Now, it is not a reactant, nor is it one of our products. It's just present in that reaction uh, as a means to make that reaction occur more quickly, uh, or more completely. So we're going to add, in this case, a manganese dioxide, MnO2, right? Now, I'm writing that on top of the arrow to indicate the fact that this is not, in fact, a reactive or product. It is a catalyst, right? So it's not going to be exchanging electrons or recombining with any of the materials here. It is going to remain as itself, and therefore it is not reactive. It's just helping that reaction to occur. So what I'm going to do, so manganese dioxide is just kind of a plain black powder. I'm going to add that, but using a different funnel, of course, to our reaction. Right? And what we should see is some bubbles forming. And the bubbles forming would be that oxygen gas. Now, what's kind of fun about this one, right? We can see this reacting much more quickly than it would otherwise. Now, what we did there was cause a pot, what's called a positive feedback loop. So those of you who had maybe a little bit of uh, ecology or environmental science in the past, you might recognize that a positive feedback is something, a change that occurs that causes the initial change to be even more 
uh, friendly. So in this case, we added a catalyst, right? That catalyst sped the reaction along, but this is also an exothermic reaction. So in the process of speeding the reaction up, that would cause an increase in the amount of heat generated in the system. The increased heat in that system caused the reaction to go even faster. So what you guys saw was the catalyst causing those bubbles that generated some heat. That caused the reaction to go even faster. We've got a nice little explosion. Now, I'm setting a really bad example by not wearing my safety goggles. If a chemistry teacher happens to catch this, uh, I'm sorry. I should be wearing my goggles and I will for the next reaction. All right, so uh, you guys ought to recognize that as what type of reaction. I started with a single compound, split it up into uh, two different constituent parts. We should recognize that as a decomposition reaction with the use of a little catalyst. Now, what's nice about the catalyst is it is not consumed in this reaction, which means, right, I can keep adding hydrogen peroxide, that same catalyst, keep just doing its thing over and over again. All right, next reaction. All right, is going to involve a magnesium ribbon, where we're gonna have magnesium metal, right? And we're going to react that with some oxygen gas just from the atmosphere to produce magnesium oxide. Okay, so, so magnesium metal, like many other metals, is not super spectacular. It's a silvery metal, and before it being oxidized, right, it's just sort of a shiny, semi-shiny silvery metal. If you took some steel wool to that, you could probably make it a little bit more shiny. Not very spectacular. Now, if I were to just leave magnesium metal out side, for example, right? Uh, over time, we would build up a little uh, oxidized layer, just like uh, if you leave some iron outside, it rusts, right? Magnesium essentially rusts, but it doesn't look like that reddish iron oxide we see with uh, 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 iron rusting or iron oxidation, okay? But it'll slowly oxidize and it'll form kind of a, a chalky white, maybe even grayish, uh, layer of oxidized material on top of the shiny magnesium. And we could probably scrape that off with some steel wool and we still have our shiny magnesium. Now, uh, again, we can make this reaction a little bit more exciting by adding some heat to this system, right? So just like we, uh, by adding that catalyst, we generated some heat, right? So generally, my goodness, this tongue are not doing their job. Right? So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of heat. Okay? So, we represent heat in a reaction by adding a little triangle above the arrow. Okay? Uh, and heat often helps a reaction occur more, more quickly. So, I'm going to add some heat just by using the basic little lighter here. So, i keep this a little bit close. might take a second to generate enough heat there. Really, really bright light. Can't look straight at it. Okay, what we've done there is by heating that system up, we sped those particles up, and we allowed that oxygen present just in the air around us, right, to have a more uh, uh, more collision, right, more energy to that system. That allows those, those collisions between the oxygen and magnesium to be a little bit more successful in their reaction, right, and we sped up that process forming magnesium oxide, which I don't know if you guys can see it, it's just kind of this uh, silvery, grayish white uh, material. All right, uh, that's it for today. Uh, next up, we'll have some really fun combustion reactions for you. Adios.